Good morning, Atlanta First. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Wayne Pierce. I am one of the many lay leaders here at Atlanta First United Methodist Church. And I want to welcome you to our special Sunday communion, Holy Communion service today, where we also will be continuing to hear Pastor Jasmine uh, with lessons in the wilderness. Sanctuary will be today's service sermon. And we are so looking forward to having you participate in that with us. You know, we here at Atlanta First uh, are in our 174th year of ministry to the city of Atlanta. We encourage you, if you'd like to be a part of our ministry, be a part of our vision, and our vision is great, to simply call the church office and let your feelings be known, and someone will be back in touch with you very shortly. We encourage you to participate with us in our many ministries, even though we're not yet back in our sanctuary. There are many opportunities to serve. One of my favorites is the virtual prayer time on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m., where it is so rewarding, at least to me, to be able to take time away from the other so many challenges that we continue to face and go to the Lord in prayer with each other, for each other, and for those who we know are in need of it. So find a small group session that you can participate in and uh, please be a part of our wonderful, wonderful ministry here. Now, today, after our special service, uh, the online concert will begin at 2 o'clock. You can join it. It will be streaming live here from the sanctuary. And it is in recognition today of the recital for Women's History Month. Women's History Month. And we have a bit of history that is, of course, so obvious to those of us who worship here regularly, but perhaps not to everyone within the sound of my voice, but our own pastor, Reverend Pastor Jasmine Smothers, is the first female lead pastor to serve here at Atlanta First. And we are so grateful for her service uh, to us. So please join the concert as you can recognize the Women's History Month in music. You know, it is a beautiful day. It is March. March typically begins to signal the changing of the times for warmer weather. It's a beautiful sunny day. There's a spirit of optimism about us now. The pandemic remains of great concern, but there is some signs that we are beginning to perhaps get back to some level of normalcy. Please continue if you're able to get your vaccinations. Please continue though to be mindful of the fact that the pandemic is still with us. And if you would do me a favor on this special Sunday with the sun beaming down, think of someone that has suffered or is suffering from the virus or from some other health illness and give them or their family a call, just a call. It's amazing how much a call can mean to someone who is not perhaps sharing as much of the excitement as we who are well are doing. So please take a moment and make that call. But now let's turn our hearts and minds to our service together. And we will do so by affirming our faith through the reciting of the Apostles' Creed, the traditional version. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he 
rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now join in music together with the singing of hymn number 269 in your Methodist hymnal, Lord, who throughout these 40 days... I'm Jasmine Smothers, and I'm the lead pastor here at Atlanta First United Methodist Church in downtown Atlanta, Georgia. And it's my joy and privilege to add my welcome um, to that of Wayne's this morning. Here in Atlanta First, we exist to worship God, to serve people, to grow together, and to engage the city of Atlanta and beyond. I hope that you'll find a way to be in ministry through worship, service, growth, and engagement this week, wherever you you are. This is a communion Sunday. It's the first Sunday of the month, and we will celebrate communion together after the sermon. So I invite you at this time to gather your communion elements, um, whether you have the prepackaged elements or whether you need to grab uh, some bread or juice. Um, just be sure that whatever you gather for communion, you consume wholly during communion as we celebrate the Eucharist together a little later in the worship service.
As we go to God in prayer, I would like to ask you to lift up Roy and Ruth Fruit in your prayers today. Roy is hospitalized, and we want to be in prayer um, for his healing and with his family. We also want to lift up the family of Reverend Junius B. Dotson. He was funeralized on yesterday. He's our denominational leader of discipleship ministries. Our discipleship ministries produces the upper room and so many of the resources that help us make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world and to see all the people. So we want to be in prayer for Reverend Dotson's family and for disciples ministries in our entire denomination during this time. Let us remember all of those who continue to be affected by the coronavirus, by cancer, by poverty, by racism, by all the isms and ills of this world. For we know that our God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than anything that we can seek, ask, or imagine. And so we go to God in prayer with this assurance. Let us pray. All to Jesus we surrender. All to Jesus we freely give. We will ever love and trust him. And in his presence, daily live. Lord, help us to surrender to you. Help us that as we come to this time of prayer, O oh Lord, that we leave our stuff at your feet and in your presence. And that we receive from you, O oh God, direction and instruction. That we receive from you, O oh God, health and strength. That we receive from you, O oh God, assurance and abundance of life. That we receive from you, O oh God, peace and joy and justice and mercy, O oh God. For we've come expecting that you are ahead of us in every situation of our lives. We come expecting, oh God, that our prayers are not news to you. We come expecting, oh God, that you are with us and before us, that you surround us and that you carry us, oh God. For we are witnesses to your grace and mercy. We are witnesses, oh God, to your power. We are witnesses to the movement of the Holy Spirit among us. We are witnesses, oh God, to your promise never to leave us nor forsake us. So God, we come asking, asking for your peace asking for your kindness, asking for your grace, asking for your mercy. We've gathered in this, your sanctuary and in all the sanctuaries that you have created in our homes and in our workplaces and on the streets. So oh God, we come knowing that you dwell in sanctuary and so we have come into your presence. We ask that you would be with Roy and Ruth Fruit and all that are treating Roy. We ask, oh God, that you would make your healing power known in the presence of Gerald Stacy and Ed and Ann Nelson and Bonnie Lane and Claudia Harris and Barbara Fruit and Marley Franklin and Hubert Davis and Virginia Cathcart and Maddie Brock, oh God. We ask that you would make 
make your presence known among Dot Frazier and Lisa Peterson and the Adams Williams family and Les Scarborough, oh God, and Dorothy and Turnipseed and Reverend Holda Wilson. We ask, oh God, that you would be at work in the lives of all that are listed on our prayer list and all of our active duty military and first responders. We ask, oh God, that you would make your presence known and that you would unleash the power of your Holy Spirit in the lives of all who are gathered together, oh God. For we have come expecting a touch from you. We have come expecting a word from you. We have come expecting that you are at work in our lives. We have come expecting, oh God, that you are ahead of us. We have come expecting, oh God, that you are releasing us from the things that have us bound up and you are releasing us to freedom in you, oh God. We ask that you would just take our world and turn it right side up so that we might recognize a world full of the fruit of your spirit, of of goodness and kindness, of steadfast love, oh God, that we might recognize this world that looks like you, a world that cares for each other, a world that doesn't care about the color of skin or ethnicity or social um, standing, oh God, or even sexual orientation. We pray for a world that loves its neighbor no matter what, oh God. We pray for a world that loves you more than it loves anything else. We pray for a world that understands, oh God, that when we seek the welfare of the city, when we seek the welfare of your people, that our welfare is wrapped up in the welfare of everyone else on this planet, oh God. So release us from the stuff. The stuff that clouds our vision of you, oh God. And help us to surrender to you. My blessed Savior, I surrender In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. We give thanks, O oh God, for your music ministry and the music ministers who are among us this morning, O oh God. And we look, ask that you would encounter us as they lead us to your cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
It's giving time. This is when we worship through giving back to God a portion of what God has so generously given unto us. And we know that everything that we have is a gift from God. And so this is the time that we can give those gifts to continue the church ministry to go forth through worship, serving, growing, and engaging. You can give securely online at atlantafirstumc.org slash give through cash app, cash app, text to give, or mailing your donations to the church office. Friends, if you don't give, there is no ministry here on Peachtree Street. This worship service doesn't happen. Our friends at the front door ministry doesn't happen. The feeding of folks who are being fed right now um, does not happen unless you give. So we invite you to give generously today. Not to Je Pastor Jasmine, not to Atlanta First United Methodist Church, but to God's ministry here on Peachtree Street in Atlanta. Let us praise God together.
close to journey. Lord, let us walk close to thee. That is the reason for the season of Lent to help us draw closer to God and work, walk closer with the almighty God. So all along this pilgrim journey, oh God, let us walk close to thee. Close to thee. So here we are um, on this in this Lenten journey. We're in the first Sunday of March, and we are all remembering what it felt like a year ago to enter into this wilderness called the coronavirus. And we remember that the Lenten season is a 40-day remembrance and a 40-day understanding that we are to give ourselves over to God so that when we arrive at Easter, we might be renewed, refreshed, and prepared for the resurrection. So we're spending this time in a series called Lessons in the Wilderness. And we know that the 40 days of Lent are representative of the 40 years in the wilderness of the Israelites. And today we find the Israelites at Mount Sinai. 
Now, Mount Sinai is important because we first encountered the grown-up Moses at Mount Sinai with his flock when the burning bush caught on fire and it was not consumed. We found Moses on Mount Sinai when the Lord said, I am going to send you murderous, bumbling, stuttering Moses back to Egypt to go get my people. It was on Mount Sinai That Moses surrendered to the will of God in his life and walked closer to thee as he traveled to lead his people to the promised land. Fast forward a little bit and we find that Moses has indeed done what the Lord has said he would do. He has arrived in Egypt. He has fought many battles. He has survived many plagues. And yet the people of God have been led out of slavery and toward the promised land following this Moses. God promised Moses that he'd return to Mount Sinai and that when he returned to Mount Sinai that he would return with God's people on their way to the promised land. So now we encounter Moses and the Israelites at Mount Sinai as recipients of God's promise kept. And they arrive at Mount Sinai in a little bit of a tizzy, not knowing which way is up, not knowing which way to go. You see, they thought that this was going to be an easy journey. They thought that, you know, Moses might snap his fingers and that they might appear in the promised land. They thought that they were done with the hard things of life because they had endured slavery. But the Israelites must take this time in the wilderness to learn a few things. They must take this time in the wilderness to remember that they are not the only ones who spend time in wilderness. They have to wander in the wilderness for a little while to remember that God will fight for them while they are in the wilderness. And they have to wander in the wilderness for a little while to figure out what the rules of engagement are, how they are to treat their neighbors, how they are to treat God's people, and how they are to worship the one who has led them out of slavery. So today we begin in the 24th chapter of Exodus in the 12th verse. And we begin there knowing that the Israelites have just received the Ten Commandments. And they are trying to figure out what this means for their lives. They have received laws of Sabbath and restitution and justice and mercy. They have received an reorientation about how they are to act and believe and behave in community with one another. And then God enters a new covenant with them, a new promise with them. And he calls Moses to the top of Mount Sinai for a word. So in Exodus chapter 24, beginning in verse 12, we hear these words. The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and stay here. 
And I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and commandments I have written for their instruction. Then Moses set out with Joshua his aide, and Moses went up on the mountain of God. He said to the elders, wait here for us until we come back to you. Aaron and her are with you, and anyone involved in a dispute can go with to them. When Moses went up on the mountain, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai. For six days, the cloud covered the mountain, and on the seventh day, the Lord called to Moses from within the cloud. To the Israelites, the glory of the Lord looked like a consuming fire on top of the mountain. Then Moses entered the cloud as he went up on the mountain, and he stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 days nights. The Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. You are to receive the offering for me from everyone whose heart prompts them to give. And then in verse 8, then have them make a sanctuary for me and I will dwell among them. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, make us a sanctuary. Make us a sanctuary so that you might dwell with us. And create in us a clean heart, O oh God, so that we might receive your word from the mountain today. Hide this your servant behind that old rugged cross so that everything that is said and everything that is heard comes straight from you, O oh God. This is your servant's prayer. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Do you remember the old song? Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true with thanksgiving i'll be a living sanctuary lord for you what we learn in the wilderness this week is that while we are in the wilderness we better learn how to be a sanctuary. While we are in the wilderness, we must learn how to worship God in spirit and in truth. While we are in the wilderness, we better learn how to sing the songs of the church and praise and worship the almighty God. While we are in the wilderness, we ought to learn how to act like we are the people of God. You see, I was supposed to preach about the golden calf this week. That's what the preaching plan said. But we're going to do that next week because first we have to learn how to worship. We have to learn what it means to be a people who are called by God's name. We have to learn what it means to be a people who understand that we were brought out of slavery and out of Egypt so that we shall have no other gods before our one true God. 
so that we might not make any image in the form of anything in the heaven or earth or below the waters that we shall not bow down to anything else or worship anything else, but that we are to love to a thousand generations and keep the commandments of God. We must learn how not to misuse the name of the Lord or to hold anyone guiltless who misuses the name of the Lord. We must learn how to keep the Sabbath and to keep it holy. We must learn how to honor our parents so that we might live long. We must learn how not to murder and how not to commit adultery and how not to steal and how not to give false testimony against our neighbor. That means not lie on my neighbor. We have to learn how not to covet or want to take what our neighbor has. We have to learn that idols and altars that aren't about our God must disappear in our lives. We have to learn about social responsibility and justice and mercy. And we have to learn how to trust God. We spend time in the wilderness when God needs to teach us something. We spend time in the wilderness when God needs to get our attention. We spend time in the wilderness when God is trying to speak into our lives, into our hearts and our minds and our souls. We spend time in the wilderness when God wants to redirect our lives. We spend time in the wilderness when we are misunderstanding what our purpose is in the world. We spend time in the wilderness when we can't treat each other as neighbors and friends. We spend time in the wilderness. When it's time for us to receive instruction, to experience God's glory, And to understand God's power. Moses, God called Moses to Mount Sinai, not before, but after he shared the Ten Commandments with the people of God. And and for the first time, we begin to see a shift in how God communicates with God's people. Before this, God communicates just with Moses and sends Moses to tell them what thus says the Lord. But now God is starting to communicate directly with the people of God. Instead of Moses being the sole messenger, Moses becomes the interpreter to be sure that we understand what God has tried to tell us. And I don't think it's by accident that the Lord takes us back to Mount Sinai to teach us How to be a sanctuary. You know, the word sanctuary usually means a place like this. When we hear the word sanctuary, we usually think about a building. We think about a place of worship that we go to to gather together and to worship together. But we're having to learn in this wilderness season that the place called sanctuary is not the 
only way that we can understand sanctuary in this world. The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and stay here. I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and commandments that I just told you about. I'll give them to you written down. And then Moses set out with Joshua, his aide, and Moses went up on the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, wait here until we come back. He gave them instruction that they could go to Aaron or her if anything came up and there were any fights or scuffles. And then he went up to the mountain. But Wayne, he didn't just go to the mountain and God started speaking. He went to the mountain and God said, wait here. When he went up on Mount Sinai, God did not immediately tell Moses what was going to happen. He did not immediately hand Moses the, the slabs with the commandments on them. He did not immediately engage Moses. But he said, wait. Sometimes, even when we are in the presence of the Almighty God and we are expecting God to act right now, to say something to us right now, we must learn to wait on the Lord. But preacher, I'm already doing enough waiting in the wilderness. How much longer am I going to have to wait until I can go out to eat? How much longer am I going to have to wait until I can stop wearing these masks? How much longer do I have to wait until I'm not walking around with hand sanitizer? How much longer do I have to wait until the coronavirus goes away? How much longer do I have to wait until cancer goes away? How much longer do I have to wait until poverty goes away? How much longer do I have to wait until racism isn't a thing anymore? How much longer do I have to wait until people don't hate me anymore because of the color of my skin or the ethnicity from which I was born? How much longer do I have to wait, oh God? How much longer do I have to wait in grief, in pain, in suffering? I've already been wandering around the mountain, oh Lord. I've already been in slavery. I've already been in the wilderness. How much more of this can I take? How much longer? Are you going to make me wait? And yet Moses stood on that mountain with Joshua. Because you know God will never take you anywhere by yourself. God will always provide someone to go with you. Moses waited on the Lord in a cloud. He couldn't see anything around him. And the people who were down the mountain couldn't see Moses. And, and on the seventh day, God called Moses' name inside the cloud. Inside the darkness, inside the weariness, inside the waiting, God called Moses' name. I've been on Mount Sinai before, 
at least what we think is Mount Sinai. I visited the Holy Land in 2011 after my ordination as an elder in the United Methodist Church. And the day we went to Mount Sinai, it seemed like a beautiful, sunny day. Getting to the top of Mount Sinai is exponentially easier than it was for Moses, but it's exponentially hard for human beings. You have to go up all of these steps and ramps, then the side of the mountain and through a building and more steps and ramps. And you're going up and up and up and every step is getting steeper and harder and steeper and more shallow and harder and harder and harder. And then when you arrive on the top of Mount Sinai, you understand that it was warm and sunny down below. But when you get to the top of Mount Sinai, it's windy and cold and you might just be blown away. Can you imagine Moses and Joshua waiting in a cloud on a top of a mountain where it's windy and it's cold and you're holding on for dear life just to not be blown away? And, and they're waiting for the Lord, waiting on behalf of God's people, waiting to see what God is going to say, waiting to see what God is going to do next. And for six days, God is just silent. The wind was blowing so hard when I was on Mount Sinai that I couldn't even stand up. I was holding on to the man-made rails that now are surround the top of Mount Sinai so you won't go flying off of it. And I was holding on to the rails for dear life. And I could hear my dad in the background saying, Jasmine, come back. Jasmine, come back. Jasmine, come back. But I just had to see the sights from Mount Sinai. I had to see what Moses saw. I had to see what the Lord was talking about on top of this mountain. And I went further and further and further and then almost flew off. But then out of nowhere... I felt the hand of my father grab my shoulder. I felt him grab my book bag. I helped, felt him grab my coat. I felt him grab me and pull me back from the side of the mountain. And he said, I've got you. I wonder if it was like that when Moses and Joshua were on the top of Mount Sinai. I wonder while they waited in the cloud if they thought it would never come to an end. I wonder if why they waited in that cloud that they thought God had forgotten that they were there. I wonder if while they waited in that cloud for six days in the wind and the rain and the cold. If their boldness started to fade away. I wonder if they realized that while they were on the top of that mountain, that God would make them a sanctuary. 
that God would make them to be leaders in which God dwelled, that God would make them to be people who follow God after God's own heart, that God would remind them that in the midst of the wilderness that God was still directing and protecting, that God was still giving instruction and providing refuge, that God was still doing what God does even on the mountain, in the cloud, in the wilderness, in the silence. The scripture teaches us that the cloud is God's glory. That it is God's overwhelming presence, the power of the almighty God, that those below didn't see a cloud. Those on the ground didn't see that Moses and Joshua were caught up in wind and rain and darkness. What they saw was consuming fire, just like Moses saw when he was standing on that mountain with his sheep. Just like Moses saw when the bush started burning up and it was not consumed. They thought that Moses and Joshua might not come down because fire was raging on the top of the mountain. Then Moses entered the cloud as he went up and he stayed on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. And in those 40 days and 40 nights, he spent some time with the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. But receive only the offerings from those whose hearts are eager to give. I wonder when we're on the mountain of life, when we're in the cloud of our situations, when things are not going the way we think they ought to go and the wilderness just gets, just keeps getting more wilderness-like. Is our response to wonder where God is? Or is our response to give unto God? Because God keeps giving us health and life and joy and peace, breath. He tells Moses what these offerings ought to be. And then he says to Moses, have them make a sanctuary for me. And I will dwell among them. He doesn't say have them make a sanctuary for them. He doesn't say have them make a sanctuary that makes them happy. He doesn't say have them make a sanctuary that they think is beautiful. He he doesn't say have them make a sanctuary that's convenient for them. He, He doesn't say have them make a sanctuary that they can fuss and fight about or in or well. He doesn't say have them make a sanctuary for their own purposes. But have them make a sanctuary for me, the Almighty God, so that I may dwell with them.
A sanctuary can be a place. But a sanctuary is also a presence. Where the Spirit of God hangs out and reminds us that God is always with us. That God is with us at the foot of the mountain. That God is with us on the top of the mountain. And that God is with us everywhere in between. A sanctuary can be a place, but I think we miss out if we think that the sanctuary is only this room right here. If we forget that sanctuary is the very presence of God and that sanctuary is also a mindset. It is a way in which we live in the world. It is a way in which we go about our life. It is a way in which we live and breathe and treat each other and encounter the hard things and the easy things. A mindset of sanctuary is a mindset to guide us that we are always in the presence of God. And because we are always in the presence of God, that we are to always be in a place of worship. And we are always to be in a place of thanksgiving. And we are always to be in a place of singing hallelujah. And we are always to be in a place of bowing down to worship the Most High God. Moses was on that mountain for 40 days and 40 nights to learn how to be a sanctuary. He had to learn how to be a sanctuary before they could build a sanctuary. Because if he couldn't learn how to be a sanctuary, there was no point in building a sanctuary. We have to learn how to be God's sanctuary. For 40 days and 40 nights. Moses entered the sanctuary of the Lord and he dwelled with God. He received instruction. He got a front row seat for God's glory. And at the end of that 40 days and 40 nights, he was turned around for a new season. He didn't come down the mountain the same way he went up the mountain. The same Moses that started up the mountain with the elders and the people of God is not the same Moses that came down from the mountain understanding that his next step for the people of God was to teach them how to be a sanctuary in the wilderness, how to worship in the midst of all the stuff of life, how to focus on God and to honor God no matter what. God said, build me a sanctuary. So that I may dwell with you. So that I may give you a place of refuge. So that I may give you a place of healing. So that I may be with you. We're not at peace in this world because we don't live as sanctuaries. We struggle so much in this world because we don't understand how to be a place where God dwells. 
We can't get along because we don't understand how to be a place that is welcoming and a place of refuge and a place of abundant love. We have so much stuff going on inside of us because we cannot. understand that even in the wilderness God dwells with us come on Chris Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary Pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living, come on worship team, sanctuary. verse says, it is you, Lord, who gave the Savior heart and soul, Lord, to every man, Lord. It is you, Lord, who knows my weakness. You refine me with thine own hand. Lead me on, Lord, through temptation. You refine me from within. Fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit. Take all our sins away. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. ways that God prepares us to be a sanctuary is through the sacrament of Holy Communion. God prepares us and cleanses us, makes us holy, and helps us to be brought into the family of God anew through communion. God asks us to confess our sins before God and one another so that we might be clean and have a clean heart within us so that when we leave the holy table together, then we will be ready to be God's sanctuary. Remember that the Last Supper, the First Communion, did not happen in a sanctuary building, Wayne. It it didn't happen in the temple or a tabernacle. It happened around somebody's dining room table. Upper room. Where God made those 12 disciples, his favorite mitfits, a sanctuary in the midst of the wilderness. Go ahead and lead us, Wayne. Please join us now in our sacrament of Holy Communion. 
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful, Merciful God, God, we confess, we confess that, that we have not loved you with, with our whole heart. heart. We, we have, have failed, failed to, to be an obedient church. We have, we have not, not done, done your will. will. We, have we have broken, broken your will. law. We have, we have rebelled, rebelled against, against your will. love. We have, we have not, not loved, loved our, our neighbors. neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please pray together now in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, you brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth, you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, you bore up the ark on the waters, saved Noah and his family, and made covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave us your commandments and made us your covenant people. When your people forsook your covenant, your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And on your holy mountain, he heard your still, small voice. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sin, your spirit led him into the wilderness where he fasted 40 days and 40 nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on a cross for our sin, you raised him to life, presented him alive to the apostles during your 40 days and exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now, when your people prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance for sin and the cleansing of our hearts, that during these 40 days of Lent, we may be gifted and graced to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Christ. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread. 
He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts... In Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim this mystery of faith. Christ Christ has has died. died. Christ Christ is is risen. risen. Christ Christ will will come come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gathered and on these gifts of bread and wine, Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ. Redeemed by his blood, by your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together, saying, Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. Thy thy kingdom kingdom come. Thy thy will be done done on on earth earth as as it is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us us this day our our daily daily bread. bread. And forgive forgive us us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Take and eat. Take and drink. Thanks be to God. Amen. Lord, as we go forth from this place today, we ask that you might make us to be a sanctuary. And as you go along your week, Pay attention to how God might be making us a sanctuary in the wilderness and on the mountaintop. Join us at 2 p.m. for our Women's History concert. And pray for someone who is on your heart, your mind. Maybe even give them a call this week. But whatever you do, Be a living sanctuary for the Lord. Now to the one who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the Most High God, be all honor, glory, and praise, now and forever. And the people of God sang. Let the 